Satoru Gojo, a special grade jujitsu sorcerer with a sense of humor, possessing the six eyes and the overwhelmingly powerful domain, the infinite void. It's no surprise why he's considered to be the most powerful sorcerer of today. And Kafka Hibino, one of the exclusive numbered kaiju, having an unimaginable power fortitude of 9.8, being able to blow up kaiju bullets that have the force of nukes with just his roar. It's only expected that he be seen as the strongest kaiju in history. Hello everyone, it's your host Godzilla Guy, and while I'm not too big into anime, there are a few that I really enjoy, such as Mob Psycho 100, Fire Force, Dr. Stone, and Dororo. Please tell me, other people have watched that, it's a, it's a great show. But two new Gen 1s that I have fallen in love with are Kaiju No. 8 and Jujutsu Kaisen. It's not surprising that these two animes are seen to be as some of the most well-written and animated animes in the past decade. Now, firstly, hello to any anime fans. Most of you guys probably don't know who I am. I'm Godzilla Guy, and well, I make Godzilla content, who would have guessed? But if you're into anything else, whether that's kaijus, dinosaurs, hybrids, sci-fi, and of course, anime, then make sure to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. But today, like always, we're gonna have two fictional characters duke it out in a ring. On that note, let's cover some rules. Now, firstly, even though he's the strongest of today, Satoru Gojo will need some help in this fight, and we cover categories as a strength and durability, as all of his really good feats come from his abilities rather than himself, as at the end of the day, Gojo is crazy strong power-wise, but he's still just a human. So to give him a chance in these categories, we will be using his feats, even when using his abilities as help. Now onto Kafka. Now, since Gojo can use his abilities in this fight, it's only fair that Kafka can do the same. Really, the only one he'll need to rely on in this fight is his kaiju transformation, where if he's in a fight over his head, the kaiju itself will take control, making him larger, stronger, and much more aggressive, pretty much having Kafka watch from the back seat. So with that being said, let's go over the categories. Those being strength, speed, durability, IQ, battle intelligence, and abilities. And at the very end, we will cover the points and I'll go over who wins and why. So with that being said, let's see if Curses can keep up with Kaiju and see if the strongest of today can take on the strongest in history. Today's battle, we're looking at Satoru Gojo versus Kaiju number eight. Who would win? Starting with strength, let's start with the blindfolded idiot, Gojo. Now, Gojo has a lot of random feats, like how in the first episode, Gojo is able to casually toss Tsukuna's finger. And even though it's just a simple toss, it was enough to crack a concrete wall with ease. Or when in his fight with Jogo, he threw him far away into a lake, making a massive splash. But I'm moving on to his actual better feats. Now, normally I only like taking feats from the actual character themselves, but since Gojo's whole thing is being the strongest, we can look at some of the best feats in the verse and pretty much assume Gojo can do the same, as he's more powerful and has more cursed energy, so that we can actually get a good gauge of his strength. Now, luckily, we can use explosions from attacks, as Gojo should just upscale it, as he has more cursed energy, so he can really replicate any feat in the show. Starting with in JJK Zero, we see Rika and Gato's explosion blow up a large portion of the Tokyo Jiu-Jitsu High School. Later in the manga, Gojo himself breaks a large portion of a bridge with a single stomp. And he has some other stuff here and there, but the best calc I could find is when Gojo uprooted a large amount of ground. When doing the calc, he apparently outputted 1,271 tons of force. Overall, some pretty good feats. Now into Kafka. Starting with his lower end stuff, we see in the second episode, Kafka punches a massive spider kaiju many blocks away. Sad thing is, there is no given weight for the thing, but regardless, he punched him hard enough where all the buildings in the way got completely destroyed. But this video is already gonna be long enough, so let's just jump to his better feats. One of his best feats is when he punched a city-sized kaiju into the stratosphere. As you see in the anime and the manga, Kafka with a single jump and punch is able to send a massive kaiju far into the sky, with enough force to make many sonic booms in the process. While the next part is a durability feat, it's also a strength feat. That being how he then tanks the explosion. As you see in the manga, this kaiju exploded with enough force that to be able to properly draw how massive this explosion was, they had to draw the curvature of the earth. And in the anime, even though it was that high up, it still eviscerated the ground and buildings below. And Kafka, well, he not only took the blast, he just stood there. And that's without using his leg anchors. He literally just stood in place. And to add on later in the manga, after the kaiju itself takes over, and Kafka watches the true power of kaiju number eight, he goes on record saying that he has never used any of the true power of Kaiju number 8. So that feat that we just went over, a literal country-sized explosion and punch, is nothing to the true power of Kaiju number 8. Then later in the manga, after getting stronger and stronger, just by transforming, he sent a shockwave that was detectable by all the other numbered Kaiju, over 10 kilometers away. That's just from transforming. And to add on one last little thing, we need to look at Kaiju number 10, who only has a fortitude of 8.3. 
which is much, much less than Kaiju number eight. Even though Kaiju number 10 is much weaker than Kafka, he's able to casually punch with the force of meteors when they strike the ground. So, yeah. I don't think it's a big surprise when I say Kaiju number eight steals strength with ease. Next up is speed. Now, this one is a bit weird. Now, both Gojo and Kafka can get to the hypersonic ranges of speed. Hypersonic being anything above Mach 5. Now, when it comes to sheer running speed, Kafka takes it, as he can get all the way up to Mach 10. But, as we said, Gojo can use his abilities, one of those being teleportation. Now, while sometimes he needs to draw out a barrier to use it, we see many other times that he can just do it on command. So, it's kind of hard to say. Gojo can get from point A to point B faster than Kafka, but Kafka is faster in the sense that once Gojo does teleport to him, Kafka will just move out of the way. So, this one is super close, and neither of them really have a crazy advantage over the other. So when it comes to speed in this context, it's a tie. Now into durability, and again, this one is tough. Now when it comes to sheer durability, Kafka steals it. As we said in the strength category, he has tanked insanely powerful explosions. He can go blow for blow with many other kaiju, and can even withstand attacks from the general using kaiju number two weapons. And if you don't know who that is, he was a massive numbered kaiju, almost entirely destroying Sapporo. And while we don't know what his fortitude is, Given his weaponized versions were able to damage Kafka, we can imagine his fortitude's upward of 9 to possibly even 9.5 in power. And then there's Gojo, a normal human. Issue is, his infinity. To those who don't know what that is, let me quickly explain. Pretty much he has a barrier around him, where if you try and hit him, he'll just keep traveling, and progressively get slower and slower, which makes it pretty much impossible to get around. Unless for a few things. That being if your attacks are subatomic, if they bypass infinity, or if you adapt to it. But there is one more type of attack that can land upon Gojo, but we'll keep that safe for the end result. But as you'll see, due to Kafka being able to bypass Gojo's infinity, durability is going to go to Kaiju number 8. Now onto IQ. Now, this one's a bit tricky. While they're both smart at times, the only way we can really say one is smarter than the other is if they buy all their Kaiju merch from Beast of the East collectibles. Reverse Curse Technique. Sponsorship. I... I thought I could watch a video without a sponsor. I was wrong. So very wrong. Today's sponsor, like many other times before, is Beast of the East Collectibles. These guys have sponsored many videos now, and I wouldn't be showing them off if I didn't truly like what they were doing. I mean, even at G-Fest, like each year before, I've made sure to buy a couple things from them. Today, they sent out both the MMS Kaiju number eight and the SH Figure Arts one. So whether you're as broke as Toge's vocal cords or as rich as Mei Mei, they've got something for you. So, since I have them, let's turn back the clock five years and do a speed figure review. The Movie Monster series Kaiju number 8 has a great amount of detail, just like how Gojo is able to figure out every little detail of his target when he's fighting, figuring out their next moves. Speaking of moving, the Movie Monster series 1 can move both of his arms, allowing him to tackle any issue. Just like his real-life anime counterpart, Kafka is able to quickly problem-solve when under stress, and is able to teach those around him. Now to the SH Figure Arts Kaiju number 8. This toy has a wide range of articulation, similar to Gojo's wide range of knowledge, which makes sense given he's an actual teacher. You can get this Kaiju number 8 in many different poses, and the best part is the sheer amount of accessories, having different heads, hands, arms, and legs. For only $55, this thing is a steal. And hey, any parents watching, Christmas is 20 weeks away. This will make a perfect gift to any anime or Kaiju fan. Thank you Beast of the East for sponsoring this video, and the winner for IQ is close, but I'd have to give the very slight edge to Gojo. Given he is legitimately a teacher, and he was able to figure out what Gato was doing in JJK Zero, he takes this category. Now into battle intelligence. It's, it's Gojo. I'm not really going to waste your time. As you see with pretty much everybody in JJK, when fighting, they're able to plan out each attack, and almost every possible attack their opponent could throw. They're able to figure out how they fight and where their weak points are. Now, granted, Gojo still needs to be careful, and his own attacks won't do too much to Kafka, but still, Gojo is much more skilled than Kafka at the moment. Once Kafka is fully done training in the manga, it could be more fair, but as of right now, Gojo steals it. And now finally, abilities. Let's start with Kafka. Of course, there's the fact that he can transform into Kaiju number 8, but then he has a lot more in that form, so must cover them. Firstly, he's able to detect where other Kaiju are. He's able to fly for a short amount of time. He can charge up and pretty much amp himself when he needs to. His roar, as we said, is insanely strong. He has really good regeneration. He can also siphon regen from his opponents, making it so that they themselves can't regenerate. And finally, as we said, if he gets in a fight over his pay grade, the kaiju itself will boot Kafka out of the driver's seat and take over, growing larger and much stronger. Issue is, in this state, he fights more like an animal, but he also becomes practically unkillable. 
having quick enough regen where he willingly destroys his own body to keep an eye on his target. And in this state, most importantly, he, he can pretty much teleport. I'll just play the clip as I don't really know how to explain it. Gone. his body as a decoy so it can regenerate but yeah it seems like he detaches his core and puts it somewhere else and regens around it yeah but yeah kaijin ray has some very powerful abilities now into gojo gojo like every sorcerer has cursed energy but onto his main ones firstly his infinity which as i said makes it pretty much impossible to hit him unless for a few things as we said he also has his blue where he pulls anything nearby then he has red which is just the opposite of blue and pushes everything away he of course has his hollow purple an attack that destroys any matter that gets in its way. He has Limitless, which I don't really know how to explain, but it, it's strong. Again, like every other character, he can also put down a curtain in order to hide from the outside world. He has a simple domain, Falling Blossom Emotions, the Six Eyes, Teleportation, Flight, and Black Flash, though no one's ever been able to do it consistently. And of course, Unlimited Void, where he overloads the human brain. And probably some other small things are if I missed any, I'm still new to the anime. So when it comes to abilities, I'm gonna have to barely give it to Gojo. Both characters have super powerful attacks and defense mechanisms, but Gojo's sheer amount help him take this. So, finally, with all the points accounted, we have a score of 3 to 4. Cash number 8 takes strength and durability, Gojo takes IQ, battle intelligence, and abilities, and they tied on speed. Though, it could lean towards Kafka. So we're going to answer who would win in two different ways. Starting with what if it took place in the same verse. So imagine Kaiju number 8 pulled up to the Jujutsu High School. Well, if Kafka and Gojo had to throw hands in the same verse, sadly, the students of Tokyo Jujutsu High would watch their favorite teacher get beat to a pulp. Yeah, let me explain. Now, I know, I know some of you are already typing away, well, Kafka can't even hit him, or how Gojo's abilities will kill Kafka. Which at face value, yeah, it seems like he would. But let me explain to you how Kafka has a counter to each of Gojo's abilities. Let's start with the biggest pain, Infinity. Now, there are a few ways Kafka can get through. Firstly, we need to address that we know Kafka in this verse would be somewhere in between a sorcerer and a curse. As he's able to go from human to kaiju, to an even bigger kaiju, would be the equivalent to idle transfiguration, which is a curse technique. But he's also human, which would make him a sorcerer, so he's kind of both. So think of him like Yuji. Kafka is Yuji, and the kaiju in Kaiju number 8 itself are Sukuna. So we know he would have cursed energy. And there is one issue with Goju's affinity. If you have a more potent cursed energy, so in turn stronger, you should be able to get through. Such is the case with Sukuna. He got through thanks to his stronger abilities, thanks to his more potent attacks, which is in turn with his strength. You with me? No? Well, me too, man. Me too. I'm getting most of this info from people who know more than me. Shout out the Jujutsu Kaisen Discord server. So, Kafka, given his strength feats, would have much more cursed energy than anyone in the verse. So, being the new strongest sorcerer, he could literally just punch Gojo even if he has his infinity activated. But I know, it's iffy. So here's another way Kafka gets through Infinity, which is all thanks to his roar. Yes, really. The thing I brought up all the way at the start of the video, Kafka's roar is insanely strong. And we know two things. One, Gojo can still hear. I don't really think anyone's going to disagree with that. He can hear when he has Infinity activated. And two, when Jogo sent out a sound attack, Gojo moved out of the way. Sound? A two-stage attack of sound and explosions. So it seems like sound may be one of the few things that can bypass Infinity and damage Gojo. So, yeah, Kafka just roaring at Gojo should be enough. As we said, his roar stopped kaiju bullets that have the force of nuclear bombs. And Gojo's physical body is still a human, so it would just kill him pretty much instantly. The teleportation isn't much of an issue either, as kaiju number 8 is pretty much blitzproof, as we said, snapping his own body to keep an eye on his target, so he can pretty much handle that. Red and blue will annoy him, but Kafka has tanked much stronger forces and just stood there. He wasn't even using his leg anchors. So yeah, red and blue won't really be able to pull him around. Hollow purple would do some damage, but I think it's arguable that Kafka may just be faster than it, as we've seen when Gojo shot it across the campus. And given Kafka's Mach 10, he could most likely just outrun it. But if he does get hit by it, he'll just regenerate. Speaking of regen, Kafka can make sure Gojo won't. As we cover, he can drain regenerative abilities. But the main thing I know you all want to hear, the infinite void. And yes, Kaiju number eight has a way out of this too. As we know, Kafka can sense the power of his enemies. So before the attack goes off, most likely the Kaiju will switch out with Kafka for control of the body. And if the infinite void hits the Kaiju, it won't do much. It may give him a headache, but as we know thanks to the author, it really only works on human brains, or things very similar to the human brain. Given how different the Kaiju's hearts are, aka their cores, in comparison to the human heart, there's absolutely no way a Kaiju brain looks anything like a human brain. 
I mean, even in Kaiju number 8, they say the Kaiju act more animalistic, which further backs up their brains being nothing alike. Now, if Kafka's in control when Infinite Void is activated, he's cooked. But again, the Kaiju itself will just take control and keep fighting. But there is one thing, one singular thing Gojo has that could damage Kafka, that being the Black Flash. Now, in JJK, the Black Flash is an attack that hits the soul of the target. In this case, Kaiju number 8's core would pretty much be his soul. Destroy the core, and Kaiju number 8 is dead. Though it would take a few shots to fully destroy it. The one problem is, though, no sorcerer has ever been able to consistently hit Black Flash, as it comes down to a trillionth of a second to land. But if Gojo can hit it around five times in a row, he could win. So even though Gojo has more points, Kafka wins like nine times out of ten in, in the same verse. Hey guys, popping in real fast, adding this last part a few hours before the video goes up. A buddy of mine who has honestly just been kind of coping has said if Kafka gets caught in Infinite Void, he absolutely 100% needs a domain of his own or else he's cooked inside the Infinite Void. Which is normally correct, but in this context of the fight, it doesn't matter. As we said, it wouldn't do much on the Kaiju. So the Kaiju won't be stuck in place processing information. Sure, Gojo has the advantage, he can get more hits off, but as we've very much established now, Kafka's so durable to the point where it just won't matter. And here's the funny thing, we know that every domain is breakable. Some are easy, and some are much harder. But I mean, given Kafka has punched city-sized things practically into space, when power scaled, yes, we're gonna bring up that for a quick sec, that punch has been calced into the multi-continental amount of force. And as I said at the start of the video, that is a super weak Kafka. Later says that's pretty much nothing to his true power. So Kafka should just literally be able to punch out of Infinite Void, breaking the domain. So yeah, even though we don't know if Kafka even has a domain to use, he could literally just break out of it. And Gojo can't just keep doing it over and over, as we know much later in the manga, that using a domain chips away and slowly destroys your brain. Anyway, back on track. But what if they fought with their own versus rules? Well, it would pretty much play out the same. Kafka's punches wouldn't get through Infinity anymore since he wouldn't have any cursed energy, but his roar would still be able to get through. And now Gojo's Black Flash won't really be able to damage him, as Kaiju number 8 hasn't really set up souls as a thing in their verse, so it would just be him flicking Kafka for nothing to happen. With their own versus rules, Kafka now wins like 8 times out of 10, Gojo taking 2 wins out of 10. So overall, the winner is Kaiju number 8. And there you go. This video took forever to make. If the recording sounds different throughout the video, that's because I recorded this throughout different days. It was just such a long script. But if you did enjoy this video at all, or are interested in seeing more content like this, then please make sure to like and subscribe and check out the channel. It would mean a lot. But as always, keep collecting, because of the guy out. See ya.